What is up guys, Jarv here, back today jumping into Destiny 2. Today I've seen the launch of Festival of the Lost and with that we have some new materials. So today we're covering one of the key ones and one that you'll most definitely be chasing down during this event. So if you want to find out the best way to get Cypher Decoders, be sure to stick around and check out the video. If you enjoy the video, be sure to leave a rating down below. That super helps me out here on the channel. And if you are new here and want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content, be sure to hit subscribe as well. But without further delay guys, let's jump to the video. And before we jump into the meat of today's video, I want to first invite you all to the Jarv Community Hub. This is an amazing growing Discord with nearly 3,000 Guardians. So if there's things you want to get finished before Beyond Light launches on November 10th, be sure to jump in. You can find the link to this in the video description below. Now today has seen the launch of Festival of the Lost. This is Destiny's Halloween themed event, which is free to all players. But this season has seen some introductions of new materials which are critical to unlocking loot and gaining access to the reprised weapons that are returning within this event. And this is the Horror Story Auto Rifle and also the Braytech Werewolf. So if you didn't grab these in the original events back in 2018 and 2019 respectively, now is your opportunity to do so. Now one of the biggest changes with Festival of the Lost is the introduction of the five additional chests which spawn upon completion of the Haunted Forest. Now as well as the two auto rifles we just mentioned, it will also contain legendary engrams which have access to the world loot pool alongside any of the Festival of the Lost masks from previous years if you missed out on those, as well as any of the Festival of the Lost shaders. Now as you play through Festival of the Lost there are three key materials. The first one being candy. Now candy will drop from pretty much most ads upon defeating them. Now you can collect this as you go, but bear in mind this does also go to your postmaster. So to save time inside the haunted forest, don't worry about running back and picking up your candy. You'll find it in your postmaster that you can collect before you visit Ava Levante at the tower. So none of that candy will be lost. Now the second key material is the chocolate strange coins. You'll gain access to these upon completing pretty much any activity inside the game. This can be patrols, public events, strikes, crucible matches, waves of escalation protocol, pretty much anything that you complete will provide you with some chocolate strange coins. You can find these in chests inside the haunted forest as well and you'll also get plenty of these out of the chest when completing the haunted forest. Now the third and final material and an absolutely critical one when it comes to getting meaningful loot is the cipher decoder. Now these are a single use algorithmic code breaker which is capable of hacking electronic locks on encrypted caches at the end of the haunted forest and you can carry up to 25 of these in your inventory. Now it's important to know that these cannot be shared amongst your fire team so in order to gain the loot from the chest at the end you'll need to use your own cipher decoders in order to obtain that loot. Now a question that I got a lot of whilst I was live streaming this event tonight was where do we get cipher decoders from? Well one of the key steps in the mission itself in terms of introducing you to Festival of the Lost was obtaining a cipher decoder and in order to do this you needed to complete a playlist activity and this included strikes, gambit or crucible. Now by completing this step that will grant you a single cipher decoder. These are single use though so you will need to gain more if you want the loot from the chests in the haunted forest. Now one thing is very much apparent when it comes to cipher decoders and there is not a guaranteed source in order to obtain them. Now to get a better understanding of where you can get these cipher decoders we ran a variety of different activities. Now Crucible is a very accessible mode for most players but matches can last as long as 10 minutes. Unless Mayhem is available in the rotation then depending on your RNG Crucible can on occasions be one of the most time consuming methods. Now Gambit itself is another option entirely but once again these matches do draw out. They can take as much as 15 to 20 minutes on occasions especially if you're running the original Gambit and as a result becomes one of the most time consuming methods. Again depending on your RNG. Now the other option was Strikes. Now Strikes is an interesting one because if you can get Lake of Shadows this in fact is one of the fastest strikes infamously inside Destiny 2. However it's not possible to choose Lake of Shadows from the director and just farm this repeatedly. It needs to be part of a playlist in order to count which unfortunately the director is 
not. Now, the last option that we tried that isn't actually stated as part of the Cypher decoder in terms of an obtainable source is the daily heroic missions. These are in fact a playlist and at the moment you can do the light and shadow mission. This will take you less than three minutes to complete and this has a chance to drop Cypher decoders. Now, the great thing about this is you can select the same mission over and over again. You can run this as part of a fire team or you can run it solo. You don't need to kill any ads. In fact, it's a lot faster if you don't and you simply run from the start of the mission and defeat the ogre at the end. And each run and every completion will give you a quick chance at getting another cipher decoder. Now we ran around 10 of these missions back to back. Now my RNG wasn't as favorable as my friend Reaper here, but I managed to get four cipher decoders within those 10 runs. Reaper though, managed to get around six or seven. His RNG was much more favorable than mine, but nevertheless, we were able to get a handful of these decoders and rotate back into the haunted forest. So our gameplay loop became running these daily missions to get cipher decoders. Once we had four or five, we would jump back into the haunted forest to utilize those keys and then jump back into these daily missions to farm more decoders. And we simply rinsed and repeat this for around two hours. So as things currently stand, that is one of the quickest and fastest and most repeatable ways of getting cipher decoders. Now, another question that got asked a lot is how do you get the Horror Story Auto Rifle and the Braytech Werewolf Auto Rifle? Well, neither of these weapons are purchasable from either Levante. That has been the case in previous years, but in order to get these reprised weapons, they are a RNG drop from the chests at the end of the Haunted Forest. Now, you do have a chance to get it from the standalone chest that spawns at the end of the Haunted Forest. However, the more cipher decoders you have, the more opportunities you have to get your hands on these randomly rolled auto rifles. So these weapons are not purchasable this year, and in order to get random rolls from them, you'll need to farm as many cipher decoders as you possibly can to get as many chest opportunities as you can to get your hands on these weapons. And a final thing to note is that the exotic ghost, sparrow and ship are purchasable from Eva Levante. But in order to do this, you first need to unlock the triumph, which is gained by opening caches inside the haunted forest. So whilst you can't purchase the auto rifles, you need to open as many caches as possible in order to gain access to the exotics within this event. And to gain access to all three of the items, you'll need to open a total of 45 caches. So if you want to get your hands on both of these auto rifles with random rolls, but also the exotics that are within this event, then by far the fastest way in order to get cipher decoders is through the daily heroic missions. As I said, light and shadow is a mission that's available today, which you can run in under three minutes. So make the most of this whilst you can before the daily reset as these missions will change. So there we have it, a quick overview of the key materials within the Festival of the Lost, but more importantly, one of the fastest ways to get cipher for decoders currently inside Destiny 2. But if you are aware of any other methods to get your hands on these, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. Now, if you have enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a rating down below. That super helps me out here on the channel. And if you are new here, I want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content. Be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always, guys, but I will catch you all again very soon.